The movie begins with a girl named Wendy, crying and hiding in a school, that seems to be in chaos, and a psychiatrist, Dr. Stern, observes a bloody desk thrown out, that created a massive hole in the wall. Dr. Stern finds Wendy, and assures her that she will be normal one day. Years later, we find that Wendy is on daily medication, their son, Carl, and so the day begins. During a calm family breakfast, it becomes evident that things are tough financially, as Wendy opens a late payment notice against her home loan. She tells Lars that she will ask for her promotion today, and Lars jokes about how docile she is. But before they part ways for the day, he apologizes for his insensitivity. After a long and clumsy day of working at a diner, Wendy approaches her boss, Angela, to talk about the promotion. Angela tells her that she will get her promotion once she is deserving of one. While taking out the trash Wendy is approached by a homeless man. Against Angela's wishes, Wendy gives the man some leftovers. He grabs it and tells Wendy that she is one of them, but turns away without explaining further. On her way home, she is startled by the same man who introduces himself as Mark. He urges her to stop taking her blue pills to realize that she has superpowers. That's how he discovered that he is invincible. Wendy dismisses this as the ravings of a crazy person. So, to prove that he has superpowers, Mara Free falls off the bridge and is run over by a truck. Shocked, Wendy quickly calls an ambulance. Later in therapy with Dr. Stern, Wendy comments about how some people get influenced by superhero movies, and start believing that they are superheroes themselves. When Dr. Stern asks what prompted this comment, Wendy just says she had a silly dream. But Dr. Stern gets suspicious, and ups her dosage of the blue pills. Back at home, Wendy receives another notice to vacate the house, worrying her further. But all she can do is go back to work, where Mark shows up alive and unharmed. Wendy is perplexed at how this is possible when their conversation is interrupted by Angela. Mark hands Wendy a pamphlet and is shooed away by Angela. She yells at Wendy for encouraging a bum and says that if Wendy wants a promotion, she must start being assertive. Wendy finds an opportunity to be assertive when she finds that some neighborhood kids stole her son's shoes. But when the kids challenge her, she finds herself uncourageous and walks away with Carl. And that night, she decides to stop taking the blue pills. She experiences withdrawal symptoms all night, and the next day she ends up altering the shape of a metal tray, with her bare hands. On her way home three drunken men start catcalling her, and Wendy decides to confront them. Infuriated, one of them attacks her, but she gets overcome with rage and pins him down. She flings the others away, as if they are flies. At home too, she parents Carl into eating his greens, as Lars looks at her with admiration. Her co-worker, Elmar, asks if she is okay because she's sweating too much. He ends up flirting with her awkwardly but she manages to put an end to the conversation. We get a peek into Elmar's life who is fascinated by superhero comics, while his father laments his son's lack of ambition. Elmar is clearly frustrated with his father and his girlfriend. In the diner, Angela finds the tray Wendy damaged and threatens to take it out of her paycheck. Wendy loses it and lifts her by the collar saying she will turn her into pork chops. Angela scurries away in fear, but Elmar watches in awe. In an attempt to understand what is happening to her, Wendy brings out the pamphlet that Mark gave her and reaches the address, which is an abandoned water park. There she finds pictures of herself as if Mark has been keeping tabs on her. Mark enters and is delighted to see her, but Wendy has questions. He explains that they are different from others and the governments are scared of their abilities, so they keep them sedated. He tells her that there are many more like them who are put on those blue pills, and that Dr. Stern is part of the conspiracy. So, Wendy breaks into Dr. Stern's office by launching herself three stories high, while looking through files of Dr. Stern's patients. She finds that Elmar is also on the blue pills, and lands up at his address, startling him. She tells him that he has superpowers, just like in the comics he loves. He must stop taking the blue pills to discover the truth about himself. The next day, Carl is being picked on by the neighborhood bullies again, but this time Wendy twists their bicycles into pretzels and stands up for her son. Her newfound confidence continues when Wendy asks Angela for the promotion again, and this time, she gets it. Elmar tells Wendy that he has stopped taking the pills and excitedly shows her his newfound superpower, electricity, and names himself, Electro Man. They decide to celebrate, and Wendy kicks open an ATM, and steals the money, and Elmar is amazed by her. They drink beer on top of a billboard. They go dancing at a club, where Wendy notices a couple being harassed by a group of men. She lures the men into the bathroom, where she beats them up. And Elmar gets one using his superpowers. They are both pleased at putting their superpowers to good use. Wendy later shows Lars the money she got, and he asks her if she robbed a bank. She laughs it off. She also buys Carl expensive soccer cleats. 
With the ATM money, Wendy can keep the house. The family begins to experience some joy again. But Wendy isn't aware that one of the men she beat up at the club has reported the incident. When he tells the cops that one woman alone beat up five men, Dr. Stern is brought in. Wendy takes Elmar to meet Mark, who is wary at first, but Elmar proves his abilities by powering the entire park. Marek says that they should keep a low profile or they could end up in a facility that is made for people like them. He knows because he was once held there too. This sparks a plan to rescue everyone from the facility. With a little convincing Marek agrees, and on their way to the facility, Elmar shows them his new Electroman costume. At the facility, Wendy flirts with the guard and tricks him. She tapes him up, while Elmar takes care of the security cameras. But as they make their way to the patient rooms, a guard spots them and Wendy uses her strength to stop him and Marek is shot, but the bullet doesn't penetrate. They try to escape but are soon surrounded by guards. Elmar warns them that he is Electro Man. Elmar electrocutes them one after another, and runs away. Sickened by the turn of events Wendy pukes, and is worried that the guards could be dead. Elmar says he had no choice, and that the guards probably survived. He wants the world to know that they are superheroes but Marek gets furious and says that it's because of such stupid antics, that people like them are locked away. He says that he tried being a superhero once, and his wife and child paid the price for it. Later, Lars tells Wendy that he called her diner and she wasn't there. He accuses her of cheating on him, and Wendy doesn't know what to tell him. The next day Wendy almost hurts her son because of her superpowers. Wendy doesn't want her family to pay the price, like Mark's wife and child. So she decides to fix things. She lies to Lars that she was having an affair with a colleague and has ended it now. They decide to put it behind them. Meanwhile, Elmar goes to meet Dr. Stern and pretends to be imagining things again. He imagined a homeless bum living in the water park, who told Elmar that he is one of them. But Dr. Stern knows that this was probably not his imagination. The authorities reach Mark's location, and capture him. Meanwhile, Wendy and Lars throw a pool party like a normal couple, and Carl is happy to see his parents getting along again. But then Elmar makes an appearance. After a childish discussion with Carl, he starts getting aggressive, but Wendy stops him. He informs her that Dr. Stern got Mark, and Wendy gets worried that they are next. He shows her a comic book and tells her that if they stick together like the superhero couple, Dr. Stern can never get them. He tells her he loves her, and she kicks him out. Lars thinks that Elmar is the man Wendy was having an affair with, and Wendy tells him the truth about her superhuman abilities. But Lars thinks she is delusional and asks her if she is taking her pills, and that Dr. Stern had called him about it. Wendy is angered by this, so Lars goes to get her some water, but Wendy figures that he's going to call Dr. Stern. So she swings him across the room, and Carl is stunned, as the neighbors watch. Wendy runs from the house nervous that everyone has discovered her secret. Meanwhile, Elmar takes out his frustration toward his father, by electrocuting him. Wendy rushes to help the man, and tells Elmar that his superhero fantasies need to stop. Tries to leave, Elmar shocks her, and she passes out. She wakes up in the facility, where Dr. Stern tells her that Elmar is absconding, and that his father is in a coma. Wendy begins to panic and wants Dr. Stern to open her vines. In order to remind Wendy what she is capable of, Dr. Stern gets her to recall what she did that day in school. Young Wendy was in the principal's office with her mother, when the principal took away her CD player to discipline her. This sent young Wendy into a rage and she single-handedly lifted the desk and launched it at him, killing him. Wendy says she never meant for that to happen and doesn't understand why she's a freak. Dr. Stern tells her she isn't a freak. She is just ill and needs to accept it for the sake of her family. So Wendy agrees to get treated in the facility, and spends several days there. She also meets Mark, who looks resigned to his fate. Wendy too seems to be losing strength because of the treatment. Meanwhile, Stern tells Lars that Carl too should come in for an evaluation, because Wendy may have passed her illness to her son. One day, Elmar visits Wendy, and once again tells her that she is special and that they are meant to change the world together. And since Wendy is undergoing this treatment to safeguard her family, he will get rid of her family. Wendy keeps calling for help, but no one cares about patients yelling at mental facilities. Just as Carl is about to take a blue pill the power goes off, and Elmar lands at their door. Carl punches him to the ground, and Elmar tells him that he is giving up, and that Lars can keep Wendy. He asks him to shake it, intending to shock Lars. The power cut opens the electronic doors of the facility and the patients start escaping. But Wendy gets apprehended by Dr. Stern and her guards, and Marek helps take them out, but is shot by Dr. Stern. This time it is fatal because the medication has suppressed his superpowers. Wendy knocks out Dr. Stern and wants to take Marek to a hospital, but he refuses. 
He's been trying to take his life for a long time because he wants to reunite with his wife and child. And breathes his last. When he finally makes it home and finds Lars tied up with lights, and Carlin trapped in an electric ring made with his toys. Wendy punches Elmar but without her powers, it doesn't do much damage. He shocks her to the floor and Carl distracts him, as Lars tosses her a rubber glove asking her to clean up the mess she has gotten them into. Wendy attacks Elmar, the gloves protecting her from shock. The pills seem to be wearing off, and she punches Elmar again, launching him into the pool, where his powers electrocute him. The family reunites, and Lars wants things to go back to how they used to be, but Wendy says the authorities will take her away soon. Carl understands that his mom will have to remain in hiding because she's a superhero now. Soon, Dr. Stern arrives, only to find Lars and Carl waiting beside Elmar's, who is wheeled into a hospital. Soon, Wendy begins watching over her family from a distance, while tracking the others who escaped the facility. She wants to build a team, of freaks. Meanwhile, Carl is bullied again and we see that he has, in fact, inherited his mother's genes. 